All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. First of all, um, like to welcome everybody. Um, happy Friday. And I had to think about what day of the week it was because A, I have a four month old son, so that throws everything into a bind. And then when you base everything around a Sunday football game and then Sunday becomes Tuesday this week, everything gets mixed up. But happy Friday to everybody out there. Um, you know, I, I just want to welcome everybody to the UB Alumni Association's Homecoming at Home. Welcome and want to thank everybody for joining us, all the alumni, the fans, and the friends who tuned in tonight. Um, like to introduce everybody that's joining us right now. Of course, we've got Athletic Director Mark Allnut, who's joining us. We've got uh, football coach Lance Leipold. We've got bas men's basketball coach. Jim Weitzel, and of course, women's basketball coach, Felicia Leggett-Jack. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight, taking a couple of minutes as we um, kind of gear up for, thank goodness, thank goodness of football season. And then please, Lord, let there be basketball, because I think right now we're all just, we're all just hoping to get there and get the game started again. Um, let's start off with, um, with, with Mark, got a couple of questions for you, Mark. Um, you know, could you give us a couple of the most recent updates with the athletic department? Well, hey, first of all, Josh, always good seeing you, and thank you, everyone out there, for uh, for joining us in this uh, virtual homecoming. So, uh, you know, we're so accustomed to uh, talking these little squares. It reminds me of the game show back in the day, Hollywood Squares, where unfortunately. I, I, Sometimes I hope no one picks me, but I don't always seem to be picked first. But uh, but anyway, I, I tell you what, uh, the latest update for us is, as everyone on here should have seen the news, um, you know, a few weeks ago about the Mid-American Conference uh, reversing course somewhat uh, from the initial decision to postpone uh, football to the spring to um, being able to start it uh, back up uh, November the 4th with Maction, which is exciting. Uh, all, all 12 teams participating and, and being able to play some midweek games for the first three weeks and then Saturday games after that. I, I'll tell you this, and I, I know the coach can speak for it, but, um, you know, just the excitement, the anticipation, you know, amongst our student athletes, uh, almost like a burden being kind of lifted off their, sh off their shoulders to have the opportunity to uh, compete again uh, has been has been tremendous. And, you know, I know that the team's preparing for uh, for the for the start of that. You know, as, as we move forward, you know, we, we've been talking about basketball and the NCAA has come out with some directives there in regards to the to a potential start date, which would be that November 25th date. Uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, both coaches are, are working on the schedule. And I believe, you know, Coach Jack's always ahead of everybody. She might be already done and like looking at us, like hitting the watch, like, hey, you guys need to keep up, whatever the case is. But, uh, you know, we, I see that head shaking, so it gives update there. But, but you know, for, for us, it's an opportunity to be able to compete. Now, people are out there, you know, we are in, in, a, in, a, in a pandemic and, uh, you know, we have to operate, you know, differently. And, and when I say that, I know we'll talk more about that later on in this, uh, in this, this webinar, but, you know, the health and safety of our kids is first and foremost, you know, number one to, you know, protect them, protect our staff, protect our community, you know, from, from COVID, and, but also the, the mental well-being as we try to support them, you know, through all this. So we're operating, you know, vastly different than what we've ever operated before, but, you know, we're going to learn a lot from it. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I can't wait till, you know, Lance's team takes a field uh, at Northern Illinois to, to really mark the, the, the comeback, so to speak, of, uh, uh, of the Bulls. So looking forward to that day. Yeah, and in case you didn't know, everybody out there, Channel 4 is the official home of UB Athletics, and we get a chance to talk to Mark going all the way back to March when all of this kind of started to unfold. And I remember being in Cleveland and Ever since that day, Mark has said, I can, I can tell you this, and it's not lip service. He has said, look, we're always going to put the student athletes safety and health first. That's what we're gonna do. And in talking to the coaches since that day, it's been just reiterated. You can tell that that starts at the top and trickles all the way down through the programs. And it's, it's really refreshing and nice to see because Around the country, that's not exactly the way it's always played. There are programs that the mighty dollar is way more important than, than health and safety of the student athletes. So it's, it's refreshing to cover a program that, that takes and makes that such an important factor. Um, all right, hey Mark, um, the importance of kind of the safety and testing right now during this pandemic, um, how do you feel like things are going right now? 
You know what? They're, they're going, they're going very well. I mean, as you look across the country, um, you know, there've been, uh, you know, some issues throughout and it's something that we expect. I mean, I, we'd all be foolish to sit here and say, you know, we're going to go through this thing with, with zero positives. It, it's going to happen. But for us, and I give credit to our, our sports medicine staff led by Dr. Brian Brada and his team that works directly with all of our, all of our sports in conjunction with our medical professionals in our county, our county folks. So, you know, when we do have, you know, the, the positive, you know, we're able to work in conjunction with contact tracing, being able to identify it as quickly as possible and then isolate it and, and, and do the appropriate quarantine. And that's how we have to adjust and, and, and move forward as, as coaches, as administrators, knowing that, you know what, you might not have, you know, a, a certain uh, you know, amount of student athletes on your roster. And, and you, you never know what, what could occur. Uh, you know, I, I don't sleep at night when I, when I know that we're waiting those test results, as I know these other three coaches are the, are the same way. But, you know, I do feel that with the MAC guidelines in place uh, that, you know, are very robust, very stringent, where we're, we're doing an abundance of testing for our football student athletes, that's going to ramp up as we start the in-season portion of all of our sports. You know, again, for us, it gives us a, a, a more of a relief because we know that they're getting tested daily. And even more than that, than the testing aspect is, you know, the educational aspect too. And what I mean by that is ways that we can mitigate, you know, this, this, this virus, you know, by you, you hear it wearing the mask, okay? The social distancing, you know, wash your hands. I think I, I've, I've, my hands are so dry, all the hand washing I do. And heck, I think I shook Lance's hand uh, the other day and I asked for quickly for some hand sanitizer. I, you know, I, I don't know where his hands have been. So I, I need to make sure my, 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 you know, those hands are clean. So. But more importantly is that we convey that to our kids when they're outside of our, our facilities. Our facilities are the safest place for them to be. And we, and we all know that, we recognize that, but they need to take ownership and they're doing a great job taking ownership when they're back in the dorms or back in their apartments and being able to live what we're preaching to them. All right, thanks a lot, Mark. I appreciate that. We're gonna get to the coaches now. We're gonna lead off with the guy who has the first game coming up football coach, uh, head coach Lance Leipold. Coach, the schedule just released. You know, we know that it's it's just Mac. It's it's matching. It's, you know, that, that, that's what you have on the slate this year. Um, pretty tough couple of games to get to get going at when you look at that schedule. Yes, it is. First of all, Josh, good to be with you and good evening to everyone. Really appreciate you, you jumping on here this evening and I uh, hope everyone is staying safe and healthy as well. It is going to be different. It's going to be challenging. Uh, you know, starting a football season in, in November is definitely different. Um, unlike the Bills, uh, we are used to playing on, on Tuesdays. Wednesdays and Thursdays so a little bit more so that part's different uh, it's going to be challenging going on the road uh, you know in 2018 uh, we came up short against Northern Illinois and then coming home against uh, in the conference championship game and then you know coming home to play last year's conference champion in, in University of Miami Ohio so it's going to be difficult and but it's I, I like the balance of the schedule that we have we're away home it alternates every week I think for everyone in our conference it's all the unique things that we're going through and uh, who's available each week and, and how you stay healthy injury-wise and health-wise will also be challenging, but uh, it, it's just great to be on the field, though. I think that's the most important. We have a few more weeks to, to prepare. Seeing the change in the body language of our, of our student-athletes has been so refreshing, and, and to see them excited to go out and, and, and play the sport that they love to play. You got a lot of talent back. To to whom much is given, much is expected, right? The, that's that's kind of you know that's kind of the, the the whole thing of it, right? I mean, have you start? I mean, I know amongst all the stuff that's happened and you know juggling everything else, have you talked to your team about expectations and kind of ha how to handle things? Uh, you know, a little bit. Uh, you know, we've talked about it, but I think it's the consistent of the approach of the day-to-day -day that we've always tried to operate since we arrived here. And, and yeah, maybe expectations are different and, and higher than before. I think the uniqueness of, the, of this schedule may, may kind of balance some things out for everyone in our league. But uh, the, the refreshing part of those expectations are that's what we came here to do. That's the program we wanted to build. We wanted to be one that was going to be consistently uh, in the conversation to win a division and play for conference championships and be in bowl games. So I don't want to enter, you know, you 
I would really kind of stymie that in any way in our players. I wanted to be excited, but at the same time, understanding the daily process that has to go, that has to happen in our work, in our preparation for us to have those type of opportunities later in the season. Now, this isn't in my notes, but we got here the exact same year. I started and you got hired the exact same year. This will be year six for you, right? Is that yes, correct? sir. That's what I thought. And so uh, the math, I did the <laughs> math quickly. I, I didn't even need to pull out my phone. I did the math. <laughs> so, okay, you know, everybody says they have a five-year plan. Okay, but let's just say it's a six-year plan. Where are you right now? Uh, it, when you landed here, you know, where are you in that plan? Well, you, you know, I, I look at year two is, and I was told by a, by a peer in the profession that year two would be the toughest, and that was our toughest year. And, and, and the watch where we've gone from, from there has been, been rewarding, I think, for, for our staff. And, and I think, uh, you know, you're, you're always judged on your latest work, so we'll see where that goes. But to, to, to win the first bowl game in school history last year and, and in the Bahamas was definitely a great experience and something, again, that being able to do things that, uh, you know, that hadn't been done here before. Um, I, I feel pleased with where we're at, you know, but again, to, to get us in a point of maintaining this consistency, winning conference championships and things that I, I don't think we'll ever be pleased. And I think that's one thing that um, the day you are will be the day that you regress and people will, will catch you and surpass you. So, but uh, um, the depth we have in our program, how we're recruiting, the work of Mark and his staff and the support of our administration, and really many people on this call that have been able to be supportive of us to help us in and, and building the program and getting the facilities that we need to attract quality student athletes has been a huge part. And all those things together, it's not just one, that uh, everyone together on this has allowed us to, to kind of build this thing and put us in a position that we're in right now. Yeah, it's interesting that you, you know, you mentioned the facilities because like I said, we got there at the same time and the facilities are night and day. They look beautiful. You walk in there and you're like, wow, this is, not the same place I walked into six years ago. Hey, one last question for you, Lance, um, before we move on to women's basketball, Coach Felicia Leggett-Jack. Um, Lance, the seniors on this roster, mm -hmm. look, the entire roster is happy to be able to have a season. But to be able to give these seniors a chance to play, even though it's a shortened season, just to give them a chance to put that helmet on, one last time and a UB helmet on, what's that mean to you? Well, it, it means a lot because at the end, we're, we're here for them and trying to help them reach their goals on and off the field. And uh, as Mark can attest to, and I, I, I'm sure our basketball coaches can say the same, is that when you, you go week after week, day after day, week after week, almost month after month on these type of calls that Mark talked about and you're not giving them any new news very little good news and watching their goals and things slip away. Now they have options. The NCAA has uh, essentially given everyone a free year of eligibility. So, you know, if someone has the opportunity to, uh, you know, play at the next level, they can do that. And, and, and looking at an, any other scenario in the spring or thing was also going to go into the risk of injury and the other factors. So to give them this opportunity in November and December, um, definitely, again, has changed body language and given those guys the, you know, the hopes and everything for them to realize their, their, their goals and dreams. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Lance. And I'm so happy for the seniors uh, on that football roster. All right, joining us now, I guess she's been on there the whole time, but women's basketball coach Felicia Leggett-Jack. Coach, so great to see you. I'm sure you want to say hello to, to all the alumni and all the friends and family out there. No, I'm not speaking to anybody today. Today is just not my day to say hello. I miss them too much. I'm a hugger. And I, I, if I say hello, I'm going to start getting emotional. I, I can't hug them. So I'm not speaking to nobody today except for Mark, who helped me get on the Zoom. How you doing, boss? <laughs> the, hey, coach. The, doing well, please. No, there is nobody who has more area codes in their contacts than you because you have players that circle the globe. How, how tough has that been? How have you juggled that with the pandemic and just kind of making sure your players are safe and doing okay? And, you know, how much has that been a part for you? 
We've been doing a lot of Zooming. You know, this has been a, a wonderful uh, situation for us and we didn't miss a beat. We uh, actually, we, we connected more often than probably we were done had we not had this um, uh, pandemic because I have my players play uh, for their countries, you know? So I had two kids that's gonna be on a German national team. I had a kid that's gonna European national team and I had a Swedish kid who was doing her thing and don't forget about my Canadians who Hannah Hall plays for, for her country as well. So we would all been doing our own thing. And, uh, but this summer we were able to connect and stay together once a week through Zoom and books and things of that nature. Coach, you got a young team or you had a young team. You got some, you got some people coming back this year, but I know, look, in the five years I've been here, I know you, that you love that. You, you, you are the, you are a teacher's coach. You love that aspect of it. Am I, am I wrong? I just, you know, you coach who's in front of you, you know, it'd be great to have a vet team one day of my career, but uh, it just seemed not to be the, the, to this year. And, and I love that Summer Hemphill is back. Uh, it's really neat to see her getting healthy and is going to probably be there on, on start of the season. And Hannah Hall, those are our only two seniors. And uh, we have a great uh, addition with Addie. Addie's been playing well for the last two years. And it's going to be, I think, a come out year for Addie. Addie's playing at a high clip right now. So, and uh, if your young kid is De'Asia Fair, who was fourth in the country in scoring, I think that as a coach, you can really walk in that gym and feel like you had an opportunity to win. Yeah, let's talk about the Asian because let's face it, that's – I'm telling you what, she, if, you, if you have to buy a ticket, she's worth buying one. I mean, she can flat out play. You have seen players on all levels, Coach. You, you've seen the best of the best play. When you watch her play, how does she kind of compare? Well, you know what? She's been a natural just talent. And what she's doing this year, she's learning how to play within a system when they slow the game down, how to think it through. And uh, her being uh, named captain this year has really been something that she's been wanting to become a leader of a team, not necessarily just a scorer and, and a rebounder, but the leader off the court. And I think that she's done a tremendous job of really hitting a lot of points. And her goal is a little bit bigger than what we want to do. We want to win a national championship, that's for sure. But she also want to represent our country and we're in play for the United States of America as well. So we have to really uh, do a tremendous job um, as a team in order for people to see her at the mid-major level to be a, a, a possibility of playing for the USA. Yeah, the, if, if you could, what, how has this impacted recruiting? How have you had to juggle recruiting and being able to do everything within this Zoom world that we all live in now? I know the general manager for the Bills, Brandon Bean, said, man, I wish I would have known a Zoom in March because I would have bought stock in it and I wouldn't need to be a GM anymore. Yeah. Well, you know what me, you know, people don't give Buffalo a chance because we're just Buffalo, you know. They don't realize that we're a hidden jewel. And uh, you see a lot of apartment buildings and buildings are being um, sneakily getting – put up because there's something brewing in the area in, in the city of Buffalo is what your New York is starting to catch on fire. And I just, you know, so what we had an opportunity to do with zoom with this pandemic is to connect with people face to face and they had to see us. And once they were able to connect with us and we share how great the city of Buffalo is and how incredibly um, uh, our, our students, our university is and our academic situation is. And, you know, we have a women's basketball program. I went to the sweet 16 uh, we share with them what we've done athletically. Now they get intrigued and uh, we've been really excited. We like what our, our 21 classes look like already. Uh, we're getting people from all over the world to, to say uh, yes to us because they get to see Buffalo. Uh, usually they say, I can get on the phone because it's just Buffalo, but they're bored. They're like, we'll see Buffalo. We, whoa, whoa, hey, 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 that's Buffalo? Yo, yo, we got to get in there. Coach, let me in. I'm like, hey, 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 slow down, slow down. Everybody can't come. It's a hidden jewel. You got to keep this a secret. <laughs> and no doubt. You're, you're right. Having, I mean, not being born and raised here, there's no doubt. When I got here, I had one idea of what Buffalo was, and it changes every day, and it grows for the better every single day. But, Coach, you, you seem like the type of recruiter that – it wants to be in the living room, right? You, you're the type of, you're somebody who would need, like, that's, you seem like the type of person that if I'm in your living room, you're buying. Oh, uh, you're buying, I'm selling, you're buying, and we're, we're going to make a good relationship, we're going to win some basketball games, you're going to get a good education. 
How have you kind of needed to finesse that? Well, this is us getting in the living room. This is how we do it. We couldn't get in the living room prior to this pandemic because they wouldn't even let us to the door. Uh, that's what I, I experienced here at, at Buffalo. As a, so, uh, you know how many home, home visits I did since I've been here? Zero. I, I went to visit kids after they said yes to us but I wasn't able to get into the doors of anyone. So I've been here nine years and I haven't done any home visits, which is kind of rare until the kid committed. And we've gone over to their homes and saw how, how they live. But this gives us an opportunity prior to a commit, how um, we are. And so I take the, my little laptop and I show them all over the alumni arena, the you know, architect building and you know, the communication building. And we go to the South Campus and we just zoom and they look and they see and it's like, let me, let, me, let me show you my bedroom. Let me show you my living room. Let me show you where, what gym I play in. And so we get to know each other a lot on a deeper level now. And so and this has really helped us. I think that, you know, you know we, we really start to do some fun things here. So I'm excited about this year. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I didn't think of that. You, you actually take your phone or whatever device you have and kind of show them around the campus. I guess that's, that's, that's the world we live in. The only problem is they can't taste the wings through a device. And once they have the wings, that's a game changer. We, we all know that. We all know that. So, hey, thanks, Coach Jack. I appreciate it taking a couple minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to welcome in uh, now men's basketball coach, Jim Weitzel. Coach, um, you want to say hi to uh, all the alumni and all the friends and family out there joining us right now? Well, finally, I, I figured out how to get on this thing. So, uh, assist from Mark, uh, Megan, Felicia. It, it takes a lot to get me on any computer, as my staff would tell you. But great to, to be here tonight, and thanks so much for, for everyone's support. It's, it's awesome. I wish we could obviously see each other in uh, person, but uh, just, it's, it's great to see it. we got things going again. Football's back on the docket. Um, you know, it's, you, can, you, can, you can see things are getting a little bit more like normal. So uh, this, is, this is a great thing to be at tonight, so I appreciate it. Hey, Coach, you got all those diplomas hanging over your shoulder. This is all my wife's. This is my figure, wife's figure, office. Figure, Mine is figure, basketball you know, pictures. So. Zoom wouldn't be an issue for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, she's the only one who got me on the Zoom, too. I, we'd still be – I'd be on my walkie-talkie if it was me. So, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, Josh, my eyes are pretty good. That's sixth grade and eighth grade behind you. So, that's, that's <laughs> the first diploma. So, we're, we're okay. Still working on the undergrad. Still working on the bachelor's, you know. <laughs> The, uh, hey, Coach, difficulty of scheduling and the challenges kind of with everything being pushed back to November 25th. Can, can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, schedule kind of got blown up. We were supposed to be in the Virgin Islands. We we're going to play Virginia. Uh, and so some of that got blown up. So everyone's kind of redoing it. Honestly, that's one of the things I was doing about 530 tonight was talking to people about playing. So we we're We've got a few things we think verbally committed. We're waiting for the contracts to be signed, but I think our fans are going to be excited about the non-conference schedule, definitely. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some great information out. Obviously, as Mark would tell you, nothing's official until the contract's signed, but it looks real promising. I think we're, we try to schedule like Felicia uh, and, and Lance had in his non-conference was we try to schedule to uh, – to improve our brand, to get an NCAA tournament bid. Um, we want to play tough uh, schedule. We know sometimes that gives you some lumps. But we think that's uh, one of the reasons our program has been successful is play the good, uh, the high level team. So we've got a few on there already committed and we're still searching for some more, but it's been challenging uh, and it's been kind of uh, changing every day. It changes almost every hour right now for the men. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you say that because the good mid majors, if you will, they don't shy away from the big boys. They'll go play them, and and what what you're starting to see, correct me if I'm wrong, is the big boys shy away from the mid majors a little bit now. They they go, eh, maybe yeah. maybe we don't want a taste of that smoke quite yet. <laughs> and, yeah, what you're I getting wrong? a little bit is is let's say the. The maybe like Gonzaga and Bray Baylor, they're they're both playing a heavy schedule, but you're not including the mid majors in that heavy schedule. They're you know so in a weird way, you're trying to get any piece you can get in there right now, and kind of a little bit is certainly any place, any time is kind of what we're trying to always do in our scheduling. Uh, you also have a little bit of your state restrictions you're trying to work out. Uh, 
because of all the hot states. So you've got a, a few things you, you think you might, this might look really good, but then you've got to go back and uh, backtrack and say, okay, that state's hot. Uh, that tournament doesn't work. Uh, so you got to kind of reorganize and see what happens. So it's a little bit of moving parts on it, but I, I'm pretty excited. I think we're going to be, we'll have some good stuff out for our fan base uh, by the end of next week, I would think. Uh, I know Mark and, Mark and I were trading text today. And uh, so we've got some good stuff uh, headed our way, definitely in the nine conference. Uh, note to self, end of next week, big announcement. <laughs> Men's basketball. All right, now I gotta, I gotta put it in our newscast. Six o'clock. I'll be ready for it. But hey, you got some, you've got some talent coming back. It, it's starting with um, Javon Graves. I mean, the kid can. I mean, he is about as exciting of a player that's that's come through. I mean, he's you know, you know. I know we've seen the CJ and and Perk and those guys come through, but but Javon. Yeah. athletically, I don't know. I don't know that many are better than Javon Graves. Right. No, he's, he's, he's had an incredible career here. If you think about the success, just in terms of success, wins and losses is he's got a chance to walk out of here as the all time winner, uh, which says a lot as a player. And uh, he thinks team first, which is fantastic. I mean, he's a gentleman off the court. You'd want your daughter to date him. Um, He's taken though, but he's uh, but he's you know he's just he's really an outstanding young man. He does a great job in the classroom, uh, and I think the big thing for him is each year he's evolved in terms of leadership because uh, he's a quiet young guy, leads by example, and uh, but you know this year now he's more comfortable to sit in the huddle and, and tell guys what to do, and that's what we need out of him. So with him and Jonathan Williams and Rondo Sagu. Josh Mabala. I mean, last year was kind of the guys all got thrust into different roles, new roles, exciting roles that they got to play heavy minutes. Now I tell them all the time, hey, we've got experience now. It's, it's not like you're the new kid uh, out there trying to, uh, you know, figure out your way in there. All you guys have played 30, 35 minutes in some nights, some nights 38, 40 minutes. So uh, no excuses. Let's get out there and let's play well. And uh, so far, those four guys are kind of done a nice job. Guys like Brock Bertram, Trey Fagan. I'm excited about getting him back. Savion Gallion as a freshman, really finished up the year well. So some good pieces uh, that we think we can develop during the preseason here. Yeah, Josh Mbala seemed to be a double-double just waiting to happen every single night. I mean, great scorer, great rebounder, you know, runs the, for a big dude, runs the floor exceptionally well. How excited are you to have him back for year two to kind of build on what you got started last season? Well, I think the thing I told Josh is since he's come over from France, he went to prep school, then went to Texas Tech, and then here, is that this is the first time he's ever been anywhere for his second year since he's been in the United States. So just being more comfortable uh, uh, with all the adjustments and that, I think has really helped him. And he's really worked hard this summer. It's the first time he's able to go back home in over two years. Uh, so he spent most of the summer back home uh, with his mother and worked out with his buddies. And you can see really, you know, just getting that opportunity to get back there. Felicia's got so many international students. Lance has got a lot. How important that is that these kids get that. And he's jumped already a level as a player. The other thing we've talked to him about is uh, evolving into an outstanding defensive player because he's already got the rebounding part uh, you know, figure it out. He's in the top 10 in the country in rebounding. And everyone here knows that we like to run and you can't run without rebounding. And so we need that to add on, but we want him to develop there. He certainly developed his offensive game. I love his athleticism. Him and Jonathan Williams give us some two good frontline players that can score, rebound, uh, and plus have a lot of experience now. I feel like we keep rattling off all these names. You just mentioned Jonathan, actually, for the first time, a kid, I mean, there's another guy who can who can play and, quite frankly, would start on every team in the MAC. Um, how happy are you with the depth right now on this team that you have coming back? I like it. I think I'm, I'm still trying to figure out a little bit where we're at in terms of uh, uh, a guy like Trey Fagan, who did play last year, came off an ACL injury. See where he's at. Brock Bertram has been real, uh, has always played a nice role for us last year. Kind of, can you jump another level? 
Um, and those are kind of things that guys coming back. Dave Skogman was a rec- redshirt freshman who's six ten and can really shoot the basketball. So those things are we're seeing great progress with it. Savion, like I mentioned before, there's a little bit of that depth that we're going to have to develop early, and uh, we're going to throw them out there in the fire and see where they go. Kind of like we did last year with the four guys I mentioned earlier. So that's how you build the depth. And we've kind of always said, look, go get it, go play, go be aggressive, be fearless. And that's been the message in practice. So we've had good practices, knock on wood. We've been safe. We've been lucky and uh, fortunate with it. So we're, we're getting some good stability with our guys that way. You, you mentioned Javon being reserved and, and leading by example. You have a point guard that doesn't seem quite as reserved, Rondo. <laughs> I mean, he seems to be the opposite end of the scale, which is good, right? That's what you need in a, in a family. You need yeah, a Rondo has never lost for words, no. So uh, that's a good thing because sometimes Rondo talks for Javon. They sit next to each other a lot in our meetings. <laughs> so what do you think? Uh, Javon thinks that. So it, is, it can get kind of funny that way. Uh, and Rondo, I think, is, you know, he ended up being sixth man of the year, which has been great. Obviously, Perkins did that three times. It's great to have that. I think our, our guys do value, like, hey, coming off the bench, uh, you know, starting is for high school, college, you can come off the bench and be a great player. Nick Perkins is playing in Italy. Uh, Carruthers played in the G League. These guys were, you know, outstanding players here. So, Ronda last year being a sixth man, it was good to see that continue as a tradition of how important it is in our program. Hey, uh, and this one's for you and, and, and uh, Coach Leipold. You know, every – Every team has a glue guy, right? Guys that just, you know, know that they have a role and they just stick. Dominic, you know, is a guy that seems to fit that. I know he's in both of your programs. How much do you like having a guy like that that just kind of gets it? Kind of, you know, is just there and he's he's willing to do. If you tell him, hey, this is what we need you to do today, but tomorrow it's going to be this, he's going to do it and do it the best of his ability. I guess I'd say first, like, and Jim, Jim would attest, yeah, you, you, you wish you could uh, have multi – in a program like ours with that many players, you can't have enough Dominic Johnsons. And, and again, and it's not statistically related. It's, like you said, it's role, it's maturity, it's encouragement, it's understanding. Um, he'll be a coach someday. I don't know which sport. He might be the first guy to coach two college sports at the same time. I don't know. He's, <laughs> he's that type of young man. And uh, – uh, and uh, it, every day that he's around our program, his maturity just spreads throughout throughout the, the locker room. When we got Dom over to us, Lance was nice enough to say, hey, look, we needed bodies. Uh, we had a lot of guys hurt, and uh, we weren't real familiar with Dom, but what he brought to our program was unbelievable. So you can see how, how why our football team is what they are. Um, the championship level that Lance has developed there is young guys like him. The character he brings in there, if I bring Dom Johnson in tomorrow and he came in and we had a game in two days, he would know the complete scouting report. Uh, as good as any player we've had here, and we've had some really, really guys with bat, great basketball IQ. So it's just a testament to the type of young man he is. All right, got it. Got some questions now for all the coaches here. Um, we got to, uh, what, what have you done during the pandemic? And, and, and Mark also, what have you done during the pandemic that maybe – you hadn't done before you know did you pick up a new hobby did you do any have you been doing anything different my wife and I had a baby so taught that (laughs) you know taught that Uh, but no um and I know uh coach you've been you've been cooking I've been baking baking I'm more of a baker now I'm I'm ready (laughs) I like baking so I've been doing a lot of that Mark's been running like marathons, so I don't know what, uh, you know, he's, he's, you know, but I've been baking. That's what I've been up to. A lot of baking. I, I enjoy getting in the kitchen and uh, making pies, cakes, and all that stuff. It's good. It's therapeutic. What's the, what's the specialty? Peach pie. My mom made him, it makes a great peach pie, so I stole the recipe. And so if you like peach pie, let me know. Hit me up. I like making them, so. Beach pies, yeah, I, anyway, so, so I guess, Mark, we run with you and then we run to Jim's house and have the peach pie after the, after the run. Mark, t- tell everybody what you've been up to during the pandemic. Well, hey, first of all, if Kate can and me and say we have another baby, I'll probably fall out and call every scientist <laughs> and medical person and see what the heck happened. But uh, 
<laughs> but anyway, congratulations, though, Josh. That's that's something special, and and that's uh, welcome to fatherhood there. Thank but, you. You know, for me, and and you know, Jim, Lance, and, and Felicia have heard this that uh, you know during this time, it's it's given me the opportunity to be the best me I can be. You know, to be become the the best leader I can be uh, by by learning as much as I can as we navigate through these uh, these choppy waters. But we're navigating through it, which is the best thing. So, you know, it was about being you know physically, mentally, and, and spiritually fit. Um, and, and I feel that you know as I achieving that as I'm achieving that, it gives me an opportunity to to be the best mark on that. You know, and, and put the AD aside. You know, the best husband. You know, the best 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 father. Um, you know, I'm, I'm down 55 pounds and I'm, I'm healthy. Uh, I'm, I'm different. People don't notice me. Uh, so then I, I kind of wonder if like, gosh, I must have been pretty big then maybe about six months ago if people were saying they don't, they don't notice me. But, you know, part of that is I'm, I'm running again. I, I know that uh, Mike Beto's on here and, uh, you know, I'm surprised I ran into him, uh, you know, out on the trails or, or the streets. But, you know, one, one of these days I, I will have a 10K that I'm going to run tomorrow which I'm excited about, but, uh, you know, changing that lifestyle and, and clearing the mind. And, and that's something that I share with not just the coaches, but our student athletes that during this time, concentrate on, concentrate on you, as, as, as I like to say, and be the best you that you can be. That's awesome. That's great advice. And, you know, talk about turning a negative into a positive. Coach Jack, what, um, have you taken up any hobbies? Have you done anything different? Have you focused on anything, any aspect of life, uh, you know, during this pandemic? You know, I'm a huge family person and friend person. And so I really got back to, you know, connecting with my college teammates. And uh, my mom's down the street at Syracuse and uh, she uh, has Alzheimer's. And, uh, you know, we take the two hour drive just so we can sit out and, and, and hang out in the window, watch look at her through the window for 30 minutes and come on back. And so be able to, to jump in the car, you know, like once a week to, to do that, that, that just filled my, filled my heart. And then hanging out with my, my son, he came home for five months. Oh my gosh. I'm like, who is this kid? He's like, he left me as a kid. Now he's a man. He's like six foot five. You know, he's just a specimen and a, an incredible human being. And George Washington is very lucky to have Maceo Jack there. I certainly miss the five months we spent together. He, you know, did he eat you out of house and home? You know what? He's a very healthy eater. Oh, and, uh, we buy a big old thing of eggs and this boy would eat the whole thing in three days eggs and uh he, he smoothies and uh grilled chicken he wants just i mean i said son there's no season in this chicken he said i don't eat for enjoyment i eat for nutrients to my body i'm like well somebody need to move those mcdonald signs because <laughs> i can't pass mcdonald without saying my car starts shaking and i i'm not god ain't done with me yet all right but my son is a different kind of level so it's really neat to have him help me become a better you know uh, person to eat and, and and I helped him with you know he you don't lose your faith but you don't really um, you know get into the word like you need to uh, when you're on your own so we got back to that a little bit more as a family. So by the sounds of it you and I will go hang out at gym and have pie and we'll send Macy over to Mark's. Macy go. can go to Mark's <laughs> and they can run and have unseasoned chicken all that yeah. all oh. they want. <laughs> Me, I can go to McDonald's. Congratulations on your new new addition oh, to your family too. Thank you, I appreciate that. What well, one other follow up on Maceo? How how is the George Washington thing going? How, how is he how is he doing there? He's doing great. Uh, this is his year to you know to, to have an opportunity. Like like Lance said, it's really neat to be able to have a year just just to figure it all out. And if he does well, he can probably go overseas and play at a high clip or sneak into the league. You never know. But um, he's a poli sci major and he's, he wants to be a lawyer. And he's certainly uh, working with, he's five blocks from um, where it all happens at. So uh, we're really excited about just the possibilities. So. That, that's awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, finally, uh, Lance, what, um, what have you done during the pandemic? We've all been kind of shut inside and you know, we've had a lot of extra time on our hands. What uh, what have you kind of focused on during everything? Well, I think at the first part of, of this, uh, I guess family-wise, you know, is you get, get a lot of chance to spend with your family, uh, you know, working working in the basement or in this office, depending if our, our son was in class or not. But uh, our daughter came back from, from college. She's uh, was in her second year now, in her third year at Stetson University in Florida on a volleyball team there. So having her 
back home was was nice and refreshing because many times as we know um, when you when your when your children leave it's not ever quite the same but I think we were able to rekindle some of those things uh, during this pandemic and and much like everyone else there I think there was some self-reflection uh, uh, my, my wife is uh, heavily working out and and uh, our, our meals and diets have changed a little bit. It's kind of rubbed off a little bit and I'm not quite the runner Mark is or anything, but uh, you know, walks on the trails and, and doing those things that have really been beneficial. And, and, and again, the same with the energy just to be back on the field, um, also feeling, feeling better as we go about it. And I think that's the part. Um, our son, uh, Still was able to play a lot of baseball. I think you know Mark. Mark talked to. I know was doing the same with his children. Is that so? So a chance to kind of be a dad. And, and there's so many times through travels and other things that we don't get to do, that uh, kind of was able to do that and enjoy that some of that this summer. But on the on the other part at the beginning, I guess I was going to say is uh, Felicia kind of alluded to. We were able to do what we feel at this time. We're we're not completely done. You know until everyone signs the papers, but. Um, these Zoom meetings and things that we were able to do, we were able to do, uh, uh, you know, some excellent recruiting. We were able to get a lot of things done, get a lot of people involved earlier than normal. And uh, we found it to be a huge benefit and really kind of sometimes overcome some of the obstacles that we've had to kind of uh, engage people in our, our program early. And we're hoping that pays dividends in December when they're signing day. You know, and let's not forget Let's not gloss over the fact that your son has a Twitter account now. <laughs> yeah, well. That was we, a big deal. That was a big deal in your household, correct? It was, and we surprised him with it. We kind of, we held out for a long time. Now, you, you better be following him, Josh, because he tells I me everyone. Hey, I follow him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you kind of got to guard that and uh, kind of balance those things. Uh, but uh, that's what middle school will do. What, what, do, you, what do you miss the outside of, you know, being, you know, around the teams and maybe what, what do you miss just day to day the most as far as, you know, I, I get a chance to, every week I, I sit down and I talk to the Bill starting left tackle, Deion Dawkins, and he's a big movie guy. He loves to go to the theaters and he's like, I haven't been able to go to the theater since March. What, what do you miss the most as a day to day activity that you haven't been able to do? Well, um, for the most part, it was, uh, and it's gotten better, was, you know, going out to dinner. You know, my wife and I like to go to dinner on weekends, and, and hopefully will this evening uh, when, when we're finished here. Um, but I, I think I did. I was a movie guy. Uh, just some of those things, but go, going to sporting events, even as a fan, I, I, I think there's so many of those things. And on the work end, for us, up until this last week, um, everything was so, we had so many groups and they had to, and then they're moving. You never got a chance to see the guys every now and then on a Zoom call to watch them just have fun with each other. And it and it's sometimes it's now giving them giving each other a hard time on a Zoom call, but it's not the same. And and really when you're trying to see them together doing it, um, those are the things that you kind of really understand when you see it again, what was missing. If, if you need a recommendation for dinner tonight, my wife and I, for the first time, hit up Black and Blue out in Amherst, and they've got a nice steak. It was pretty, pretty, pretty tasty. Mark, I want to I ask you, I'm going to jot that down. The, Mark, I want to ask you, what, what do you miss kind of day to day? You know, what's the, what, what aspect of life, you know, do you, you kind of miss? Yeah, first of all, just going back to that black and blue, if, if I go there, can I borrow some money, Josh, to <laughs> kind, of, kind of pay that, even just for the salad? Just give me a salad. Give me, give me 30 bucks for that salad. That'd be, that'd be great. Hey, hey, I didn't say I paid for it. <laughs> I said it was good. Uh, no, I, I, I hear you. I like that chopped sirloin at McDonald's that Felicia was talking about earlier. So, no, no, seriously. Um, gosh, you know, it's, and this is, you know, been my, my life for not as long as, as, as others on here, but, you know, since I was 18 years old, you know, as a, as a freshman at University of Missouri, you know, just been associated with collegiate athletics, you know, not just, not just football, but uh, with everything. So, you know, what I missed was, uh, and it, it was, it was, it was, it was hard, you know, when coming around, when you knew that September 5th, we were going to, you know, go to Manhattan, Kansas. I'm from Kansas City, you know, two hours east of, of Manhattan. It would have been an opportunity for, uh, you know, for us to reunite with, with family, uh, both from, you know, Kate and I and, 
and everything else and, and not being able to participate in that. Um, I, I love to travel. You know, I love to travel, you know, mainly associated with my work more than more than anything. I travel, I travel a lot with national committees and, and competitions and everything. And, and my wife and I are always sitting, like Lance mentioned earlier, uh, you know, both our sons uh, play at uh, Matthew McCarthy baseball that is right there uh, next to the runway. So you, you hear, see the planes come in all the time and I always turn my wife, gosh, I see that Southwest jet. And she thinks I'm a little, you know, nuts because I can see, you know, see from the direction it's coming. I said, okay, that one's coming from Chicago. Okay, that one is coming from Baltimore. And she's like, how do you know this? Like, trust me, I know I've flown those flights, you know, so many times. But, you know, just missing the competition of, of you know, our student athletes, missing, you know, the opportunity to, to travel and not, not be concerned about hot states and, and, and this and that. And, and I know we'll, we'll get there again. Um, which I'm, which I'm excited about, but uh, you, you make do for, for what it is. And, um, and, and as we talked about earlier, you know, we adjust uh, as a family, we adjust as a, as a department. And at the end of the day, it's to still provide the best we can for our student athletes. And even though they might not have this competition right now, it's, and I give credit where credit is due to these three individuals that are right here that I'm going to share the screen with is, you know, what they're doing to, to keep them in the, the best routine as possible. And no doubt that that travel thing hits home. I was supposed to be in Vegas with the Bills, checking out their new stadium and supposed to be in Nashville this week. It's just, it's, it's a new world we live in. That, that's for sure. Okay. Give me an idea. What, um, Mark, can you let everybody know, um, you know, how they can help with the make it possible campaign? Sure. Well, first of all, just, Tell folks what the Make It Possible campaign is if, if they're not familiar, you know, with it. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a campaign to help us help our athletic department. And we're full transparency here in terms of what it's going to be for. Uh, as, we, as we go through this, we know that we, we've lost, um, you know, quite a bit of revenue. You know, if you look at, uh, you know, not playing Ohio State, not playing Kansas State. Um, you know, you look at, you know, student fees being impacted by this. You look at NCA distribution, MAC distribution, whatever the case might be, that uh, there, there's going to be a shortfall there. But when we talk about make it possible, we talk about what we've all been talking about here, opportunity for our student athletes. And to be able to provide this opportunity, we have to follow strict guidelines, strict COVID guidelines. And, you know, we estimated a cost this year with testing, with, uh, with PPE, with any type of facility adjustments that we have to do, anywhere from about one to $1.2 million this year. So the Make It Possible is a $1 million campaign to help you know, subsidize you know, that, that expense. We kicked it off in September. Um, it's a year long campaign. There's gonna be you know, many micro campaigns associated with it. Uh, the, the last event that we had was a, a virtual 5K, 10K you know, race where we had close to 500 participants. So thank you for everyone out there who, who did that. Um, and we had, and again, to our staff, you know, I challenged our staff to, to raise, you know, an amount of money. So I can't go out there, or Lance can't go out there, Felicia or Jim can't go out there and say, hey, can you help us? When a person looks at them, it's like, well, okay, we can help. What, what have you done? Because we, we can all help, and especially during these, during these times. So, you know, for us to be able to have that campaign out and have, um, you know, close to 70% of our staff, you know, be a, be a part, you know, of that race was, was phenomenal. We'll have another opportunity coming up soon, more details in terms of a virtual sellout of UB Stadium, a virtual sellout of uh, Alumni Arena. We had a golf tournament, you know, a couple weeks ago at, at, at Park Country Club, and we had two flights sold out, 36 teams, you know. I feel bad for the three individuals who played with me, but, uh, but we had fun, you know. We, we, we had fun, and we raised money for that, so Set a goal of a million dollars. Uh, you know what, we're about five weeks into it and, and we've raised north of $200,000. So to be at that point now is exciting and we still need you know, to keep that momentum going and, and please be on the lookout to help. I mean, any little bit helps. I mean, we just signed a contract, the Mid-American Conference just signed a contract with our testing providers for football, which more than likely we're gonna use for other sports. It's $51 per test, okay, $51 per test. So when you, when you think about it, you know, you might say, you know, that's, that's, that's costly, but you know, it's definitely worth it because again, as I said, we want to protect our student athletes, our coaches, our staff, and more importantly, you know, our, our great campus community and also Western New York. So uh, please uh, go to our website, ubbulls.com. Uh, you, you'll see where it's at under the, the blue and white fund and, and, and please give and be on the lookout for other opportunities to participate. 
I saw Mark out there golfing. Um, and the reason I saw him is because we were both in the woods looking for our balls. The, the drives went to the right and went to the left. They did not go straight, but I had a great time out at the UB golf outing as always. Hey, we're going to wrap things up. Coaches, thanks so much for hanging out. Mark, as always, great chatting with you. Thanks to all the alumni, the friends, the families that kind of hung out and checked this out. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Have a great, safe weekend, everyone. And go Bulls. Go Bulls.